Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to finish up this shuffleboard by using some wipe-on poly. I'm going to show you how to use this. Super easy to use. You're going to like it. Let's check it out. So in this video, I'm going to be putting a finish onto my shuffleboard table here. And if you want to see how I went about building this, just go ahead and check out this video right above me. But uh, for this, I'm going to use a uh, Wipe-On Poly right here. And uh, this one is a clear satin and it's a uh, Minwax Wipe-On Poly. And I like this one. Uh, in California now, we, we have to use the uh, water-based one, which... Uh, I haven't really had a chance to use it yet. I bought a few of these before um, they were outlawed, so I have a stockpile of them, so I like to use them. So for the wipe-on poly, you're gonna need uh, a rag to, to apply it. And I just have a, um, a t-shirt, cut up t-shirt here. I'm gonna pour it into a little tub, you know, butter tub or something like that, whatever, whatever you happen to have. And that makes it real easy to uh, dip the rag in and apply it. I wanna cover my hands with some uh, gloves when I'm doing that because my hands are going to be touching right onto the uh, wipe on poly um, and I just you know I just want to keep it off my hands now before I do all of that I'm going to wipe this whole thing down and I use uh, a tack rag and I keep the tack rag in a um, jar like this and that keeps it uh, from drying out and allows me to use it and they're relatively inexpensive uh, when you use them you don't want to press down a lot because basically it's just uncured varnish on there and that's what's uh, picking up the last bit of the dust there. And in the corners, I use a foam brush, so I'll, I'll put a little extra um, poly there, and you'll see when I'm doing it, I'll use this in the corner to make sure that I get the corners uh, nice and saturated. Now, when you use wipe-on poly, you don't put that much on, but you do want to make sure you get it all over everything. And when you're wiping with a rag, sometimes it's difficult to get right into the corners, and that's where this comes in handy. And then finally, the last thing uh, you need is between coats. You need to buff it down, sand it down a little bit. You can do that with um, uh, steel wool if you want, but I find sometimes that that leaves a little bit of the steel wool on the uh, surface here. Uh, these 3M products here, these uh, finish pads, this is a fin final finish. This one's a little bit rougher here. Um, between coats, I use this one. And then right before my last coat, I will use the final finish. But um, I like the way these work, they work pretty good. And it's just a quick little wipe down, which I'll show you. So what are the advantages of using a wipe-on poly as opposed to a just a brush-on uh, polyurethane? Uh, some of the advantages are that a wipe-on poly is um, dust-friendly, so that uh, you don't have to be in a, you don't have, don't have to worry about dust settling on because it dries rather quickly. Uh, and because the coats dry rather quickly, you can apply them uh, quite often. They don't require cleanup afterwards, like with a brush. Uh, you have to use some paint thinner and clean it up. You can just throw out this rag once you're done applying it. And because I use a throwaway sponge brush, I just toss that in, toss that away. Um, some of the disadvantages of using a wipe-on poly is that it's a very thin coat. So you have to generally apply about three coats. But uh, like I said, they do go fast and they dry quick. And um, when you use these um, 3M, scrub brushes, the finish brushes, or finish pads, I should say, um, they finish up pretty quick, so it, it's not that all that hard to put on three coats. And you can do it within a day. I generally will do two coats a day, and I'll wait for the next day uh, to the final coat. Now, uh, also, Wipe-On Poly generally uh, has a rule, is a little bit more expensive than brush-on poly, uh, polyurethane, but um, I find that the convenience of doing it uh, with the Wipe-On just makes it... Uh, much easier. And I've never had a bad finish come out with the wipe-on poly urethane, but uh, when I do the brush poly, uh, sometimes you'll get a bug that lands on the thing or you get some, some hair, or some dust on there, and it makes it rather rough. And you and generally end up sanding more between coats because you have such a thick coat on there. So let's get into applying a wipe-on poly finish. Now, first thing I wanna do is put on gloves to protect your hand which is what I'm doing here. And I generally just put it on the one hand that I'm going to use to wipe on the poly, and I just leave the other hand alone. And make sure that you have a, a rag close by to wipe up anything. So 
You want to make sure that the polyurethane is, is well shaken up, which I did do earlier. Open the lid here, and I make sure that uh, I don't have any loose particles there that can pour into the bowl here. Make sure that's clean. And I'm just going to put some of this polyurethane in there. On my board here, this is going to be relatively simple. I just dip, dip it in and just start wiping it onto the board. And it's just that easy. And I like to, before I head to the sides, I like to get the excess off on top here because it's nice and easy to uh, wipe it down. Now you don't want to go too thick with this stuff. Uh, you want to have a relatively thin coat on there so you do wipe it in pretty good and again that allows it to dry and don't be afraid to overlap a little bit that's fine as long as it's not too dry and what I'm doing is I'm looking at this at an angle so they can see the reflection of the light to see that uh, I have a nice even coat across there I don't have any pooling of the poly And you can see right away it brings out those colors in the board and uh, just a nice little sheen on that. Now sometimes the end grain will take a little bit more and uh, that's just what you have to do. All right, so now I can move on over to this. Okay, so I generally like to work on the outsides first and then work my way in. Now I will be applying a coat on the bottom too. So, and actually this is um, just doing a pretty good job of getting into the corners. And again, it's just a small old t-shirt that I um, cut up. The advantage of using a tub, a margarine tub, is that you can seal up whatever um, paint that you have left over in there so that, because you're gonna be using it again just in a little while, Now another tip is to always work away from you. So that way as you lean over the board here, you're not touching it with your stomach or other parts of your body. So always do the parts furthest away from you first. Now the plywood I'm going to give a little bit extra on because it doesn't, it soaks it up much more than the maple on the outside. You see those corners are where you want to get into and actually that worked pretty good. You may not even have to use that foam brush. So when I apply it on I, I use a circular motion just to get it all on then I wipe it with the grain. Does that make a difference? Probably not. That's just what I do. So as you can see, this is a pretty quick process. Applying this. Whereas the brush, brush on method would be a little bit more time consuming and you would have to make sure that you work with the grain when you're brushing that's uh, that's going to get you the best finish it looks like i might have missed a little part right here go back and when you have to go back over something make sure that you wet it down pretty decent you don't need to put tons on there but you do do want to make sure that you don't have a dry cloth when you go back over parts that have already started to dry it's almost like like you want to put on a second coat and I got a little bit of lint there, pull it off. Again, like I said, the nice thing about it is these coats are so thin that if you do acquire some lint or dust in there, it's relatively easy to get rid of that on the sanding coats between. Once, once I started using Wipe on Poly, uh, wipe on poly um, I pretty much use it every chance I get if I have a project that dictates that. And I see is any spots that you miss, you of course will 
make up for it on the second coat. Okay, so that, uh, that finishes that. I have a little bit left in this container, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on it. You can pour it back in if you want. Uh, that'd be perfectly fine. And then uh, when you throw this rag out, just open it up so that it's not clumped together. Uh, I don't know if this can spontaneously combust or not, but just to make sure, I'm gonna leave it open. I know that the um, water-based one would not. So, turn this on over and put that there. And now we'll just let this dry for about an hour or so, maybe a little longer, depending on the weather, and uh, come back and give it a quick little sand with the pads, and we're ready to go. Okay, so I let it dry about uh, three hours, and um, it feels actually pretty good. Um, and it dries pretty quick. The first coat generally gets soaked into the wood somewhat too, and uh, so the first coat dries pretty quick. The second coat will um, not dry as fast, but it also takes less uh, poly on it uh, to finish it up. So uh, all I have to do now is I just take this uh, 3M, the uh, finishing pads, and this, this one's a little uh, Scotch-Brite um, pad, and this one's a little more rougher than, than these right here. And I use these for between the coat, and this is the next one up. Now, I don't know what the actual grit is. They don't say this just says finished pad. I think the other one is a uh, sanding pad or something like that. But um, so all you do is just go along it just like I did. I mean, it just doesn't, it doesn't take much. Um, you just want to sort of get the bumps off. And there really wasn't much in the way of bumps, and it, it, it sands up rather quickly, or smooths out rather quickly, so you're not really sanding, you're sort of buffing it. But, um, and you're just, you're just scuffing it just a tiny bit just to give it some more adhesion and to pull off anything that may have been stuck to it. Uh, again, because it's such a um, thin coat and it goes on so smooth that it really, there's almost no way to really mess it up. One of the reasons I like this finish as opposed to others. And very little equipment is needed uh, to use it. So that's the other big advantage of it. All right, now, um, you should use, you know, my shop is pretty well ventilated, it's pretty, pretty good size, but uh, you should have good ventilation with this stuff. Um, the water-based stuff isn't as bad, but uh, this stuff does have a bit of a smell to it. So once I'm done with that, uh, once I'm done with the scotch brad pad, I go ahead and take my tack rag and just run across there, and that's going to pull off all of the little grit that is left there from that pad. And uh, if you were using steel wool instead, it would pull any little bits of steel wool that were left. Uh, one of the reasons I don't like using steel wool is that eventually it accumulates in this, this right here, so you can't use it as much. Now, uh, the tack rags are not that expensive, so you, know, you should have a few of them in, in supply, and I have a couple of them couple new ones yet but uh, this works out so well that I've been able to reuse this one quite a few times all right so that is all that is needed between coats and so now I can go ahead pull that big piece out uh, now I can go ahead and just apply another coat just like I did before I'll apply two more coats and we'll come back and look at that Okay, so I have my three coats of uh, poly on here, and uh, I have this uh, pad here, which is a final finish pad from 3M. And all you do is you just go and you just buff it on over everything. And I uh, just give it a final buff. And what it does is it buffs the paint, but it also um, takes off any little bit of dust that might be left, uh, anything like that. It doesn't take much. You just, you just sort of rub it along there kind of fast uh, you can see you see how quickly I'm doing this here but all it does is smooth down any rough parts that would be there um, 
anything, anything you have left. Like I said, there, sometimes there's just a little dust. And the nice thing about wipe-on poly is the dust is just sitting on the surface, so it pops up really easy uh, once you start using these. And um, that's pretty much pretty much it. You know, just get all the all the edges here on the inside. So you can see they have a little feet right here on them. Cool, no damage. So that pretty much finishes up. All I'm gonna do now is just uh, go ahead and put these boards right in the middle and all of my finishes. So I also, I just set the board here and kind of buff that down too. I'll pull it out and buff it a little bit more, but the board feels really good. This the uh, shuttle board itself feels real good from that finish. Really, if you're looking for a nice, easy way to do a finish that uh, is relatively quick and uh, doesn't require much in the way of tools, wipe on poly is the way to go. And again, it's not it's it's not a um, a real thick finish. So you know, if you may you, maybe ten years down the road, you might have to do some more of it, or depending on how much this is played, you might have to do it in a couple of years. But it's so easy. All you do is just take out a rag, put some more on, wipe it on, buff it off, and it's good as new. So it's really great stuff. Next time you're looking for a finish, just try it out and see if you like it, but I'm sure you will. I know I do. I use it as often as I can. And if you like this type of content, please do subscribe. Uh, that really helps out the channel and give us a like. That helps us out too. And any comments you have, leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them if I can. Thanks for watching. <laughs>